Okay, so I know I promised you a second video related to my Starlink installation, and here you go. The topic, however, is going to be slightly different than what I originally had suggested it would be. I talked about the fact that I was going to connect to uh, my existing LAN through our, a Meraki router from Cisco that I have, and I have actually done that, but to be honest with you, that's maybe a five minute video, and there's not a lot of you know, exciting stuff to show you. Um, I'll talk about that at the end of this video. I'll spend a little time talking about that for anyone who's, who's curious, and if you don't care about that, you can drop off before that. Instead, what I'm going to talk about in this video is my installation out in the yard using the tripod that came with the Starlink was fine, um, but as I mentioned when I did that, it was purely temporary, and once the snow melted, if I liked my Starlink, I was going to um, bring in one of the roof mount kits that they offer and move the, the dish from the stand in the snow up onto the roof. But I needed to wait until there was no snow on the roof because I don't really want to be on the roof in the middle of the winter in northern Wisconsin. Well, we had five straight days over 40 last week, and the snow melted off my roof. So that's what this video is going to be about. I purchased the what Starlink, the Starlink Volcano Roof Mount and installed that and this will document that process for anyone who wants to follow along and do the same. Everything you need to install the roof mount is included in one tidy little box, including the mount itself made out of aluminum, galvanized lag bolts to connect it to your roof, clips for holding the cables in place, as well as some black sealing material for preventing leaks. Unfortunately, the location of my roof mount was nowhere near the hole that I already had drilled through my foundation. So I had to prepare to put it in a different spot. So I picked up some Schedule 40 PVC uh, conduit, non-metallic conduit, and I uh, went ahead and took a, an end cap and notched it so that I'd have a spot that I could fit the cable through. I'm going to cement these pieces together with the exception of the cap, which I'll just allow friction to hold in place in case I ever have to pull things out. This cap on the end is held in place by a pair of screws. When you remove that it has a rubber seal around it to keep water out and it allows you to feed the cable up through the bottom entry uh, opening and then turn it 90 degrees and then go into the pipe that actually goes through the wall. So this makes it easy to get it around the corner, especially with that lightning suppressor molded into the cable. I'll use some adhesive I have left over from another project from around the house. First, we start with a primer that softens up the plastic. Then we'll use the adhesive itself that binds the pieces together, that glues them together. Um, notice that they're not both the exact same, but they'll work. So you start off with the primer, you apply it liberally with the applicator that's included in the dispenser to both the pipe that's going to be go going in and then the, the both the male and female sides. Then you let it sit for a few seconds, make sure that it's dry. Um, it doesn't have to be you know completely dry, but mostly dry. Then you take the adhesive and you apply that on the inside of the female part of the joint. And then all you have to do is take the pipe, put it in and twist it as you seat it, push it all the way until it seats on the bottom. And then we'll do the same thing with the small pipe that's going to go out the bottom. Um, we'll prime it, prime the female side, add the adhesive after it dries for a few seconds and again just like we did with the other pipe when we insert it we're going to turn the pipe a little bit as we push it in to make sure that it completely uh, seals and gets glue on the entire surface of the joint once that's done then we can just set it down let it go and the cap, as I mentioned, I'm just going to have friction hold that in place. I'm not going to bother gluing that because I want to be able to take it off if I ever have to pull the cable out for some reason. 
When you own a brick house, a hammer drill is a necessary power tool. So we'll use that to create a hole large enough for our conduit to fit through. It took me a little trying to get it big enough, but then I was able to slide it all the way through right into my basement. And to make sure that we keep the bugs out of the house or mice or any other kind of pests, we use a little foam sealant that we squirt in. We do that both from the inside and the outside to make sure that uh, the pipe is held in place and to keep any critters that are on the outside staying on the outside. After allowing the foam sealant to cure overnight to make sure it's good and solid, we come up and survey the roof and pick out the location where we're going to install. I used the app on the phone to make sure I had a clear view of the sky, and I also need to be able to run the cable all the way down to the conduit that I put through the wall yesterday afternoon. Now that the foam is cured, I could use a utility knife to cut off the excess. The instructions suggest using a stud finder to look for your roof trusses. That really doesn't work well on asphalt shingles. I find that tapping the roof with my hammer and listening to the sound that it makes is even more accurate than trying to use a stud finder on the asphalt shingles. It just works a lot better. I did the same thing when I put my solar panels in and I almost never missed the roof trusses that way. The arrangement of the holes on the mount will only allow two of them to be over a roof truss. Therefore, there are two longer lag bolts that go into those holes. We'll start a pilot hole where the first truss lag bolt will be installed. Then we'll move the mount out of the way and put the pilot hole all the way down. Now we just need to drill each of the pilot holes into the truss for the two leftmost and through the roof sheathing for the remaining four. Now that we have our six holes, we take the sealant that was provided to peel off the paper backing. It's kind of sticky, so you wad it up in a little ball and you push one. Uh, once you've wadded it up, you push one over each one of the holes that you've drilled in the roof. The larger pieces of sealant, just like the small ones, you peel off the paper and these you actually put over the top of the smaller ones that you've already put in. There's one for each side of the roof mount where it hooks to the roof. Tighten each of the lag bolts, being careful not to over tighten them and strip out the holes. Note that the sealant material is soft and as you tighten the bolts it will squish out the edges. I used my hand socket wrench to do the last of the tightening because it's a little bit more precise of an instrument than the powered impact driver. Now we can install the dish itself. They give you a little bag for carrying it up to the roof, but I didn't find that I needed that because my ladder was only an 8-foot ladder. Now that our Starlink dish is in place, time to plug it in, power it up, and let it find the satellites. It takes anywhere from 30 to 60 seconds for it to go through this process. Once it's done, you're up and going. Now that we've validated that everything is working the way we want, all that's left is to secure the cable, route it in the direction that we want it to go, and use the provided cable clips to hold it in place. Again, the biggest challenge, being that it's a brick house, 
was I had to use some anchors to put the clips in there. Although I did have a couple of anchors that were left from a previous project still in the wall. So that's why the cable is kind of routed a little farther out in some spots. And then I run it in, ran it in through the conduit that I put in through the wall and slid the notched end cap on to keep the critters out. And as I mentioned, just using friction to hold that in place. Once that's done, all that's left is to cover the opening in the pass-through with the provided sealed cover. And that pretty much buttons up everything on the outside. I'm not quite sure what was up with it, but it actually took a couple times of unplugging and replugging the dish before I got a good solid stable connection. But that's it, and now we're good. So if you join me today to learn how to install your Starlink Volcano Roof Mount, now you know. But as promised, if you really came here because you wanted to learn how to connect your Starlink to your existing LAN, well, I know I promised I'd cover that too, so let's get into that now. The first step was to unplug the Wi-Fi router that came with the Starlink kit, and instead route that connection into my WAN port of the Meraki Cisco router. Once that was completed, then it was just necessary to run cables to my existing network infrastructure, the blue cable to my network switch, and the red cable to a test computer that I have. So that was it for the hardware, then all that was left was to configure the software. The router had its built-in DHCP server, but it automatically assumed that you wanted to route everything through the new router, which makes sense. But because of the fact that Starlink is not yet in final production state, and is not 100% stable, I needed my critical loads to continue to use my existing cable connection. So here is a little snippet from the configuration file that I run on my DHCP server. This is the main configuration file, dhcpd.conf, for the Internet Systems Consortium DHCP server. I set the default router, highlighted in red, to the address of the Meraki MX67. For critical hosts, such as my desktop that I use for work, highlighted in blue, I put an option in to indicate that it should use the router for the existing cable connection. I also wanted to mention one last thing here. I've had some people who I talked to who were concerned that since they got on the beta, they've seen some periods where their connection is dropped and they're complaining about it. And I pointed out to them right in the FAQ, as you can see highlighted here, it says there will also be brief periods of no connectivity at all. So that's during the beta. Once they go into full production, I expect this to be just as stable as any terrestrial internet connection might be. Okay, so we covered the roof mount and now we've covered connecting to your LAN. If that's what you came for, now you know.